What's good, people? Welcome back to the Chain Reaction. Wow. What's good, people? Welcome back to the Chain Reaction podcast. This, I believe, is episode 15. You get me? I'm here with my guy, Lee, to the bag juice. I'm here with F. You get me? You know it's us. Never. Never them. You know the vibes. But how are the man them today, man? Lee, we start off with you. How are you? How are you, man? Listen, I am in a bit of a predicament for all you people at home that don't know, like, well, you wouldn't know, you know what I'm saying? But you can see by this setup, it's a little bit different. Man's got Corona in it. So it's not really a one where I can be random and them, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be as, wait, F, did you just change your, your picture to back juice, fam? <laughs> you know the vibes. <laughs> Listen. Let me just tell you, I'm being a grown up right about now because it's completely <laughs> different. Room, but yo, let's leave it. So, yeah, I got Corona this week. Um, yeah, so I said to the man, you know, do we still want to do the pod? But obviously, we got to get this pod out to you guys, man. You know what I'm saying? So, we don't stop, man. I'm a little bit ill, a little bit under the weather, but you know, I'll be back to right, right as rain within, you know, within no time. So, hopefully, we should be back in the studio, not next week because I want to do the full quarantine thing. But a week after, you know what I'm saying? But that'll probably be Christmas by then, isn't it? Oh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what going on anyway. We'll work around it somehow. However, we can work around it. Do you get me? Definitely. But yeah. Um, f- burn. I don't mind them. Oh, we work well, bro. You hear me? We're Lamp. good, man. We're good. Can't complain, man. F. Yesterday was a special day. Do you want to tell us about that? Oh, uh, yeah, man. It's my birthday still. Mm. Mm. We were supposed to record the pod yesterday, but, you know, obviously I had to celebrate. So we're here today, man. I don't know. Oh, hey, F, I Lee was supposed to be there, but good thing he weren't there because, you know, he got the virus. Yeah. Coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I appreciate you guys, though, man. It was a great day, so. You gonna tell us what you how you celebrated? Oh no, yeah, we went out to eat. Couple of the guys, couple of my cousins, my kids, my missus. Mm-hmm. Had some good food. Mm-hmm. You know, thank God yeah. for a New Year. Mm. Mashallah, man. But well, I hear what. Uh, you you got you got you got a gift that was um. That, that that gassed me yesterday. <laughs> that had me excited. You want know, to you know, free up what that gift was, bro? Oh, no, yeah, I got a brand new IMAX, too. Wait, what? Yo. <laughs> I'm like, that, you must be gassed. What? No, proper, proper. Were you 4K now? Yeah, man. I haven't even opened it yet. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I need to get a desk. Mm-hmm. And then I'm in the game. Big up, big up to S Mrs. for that man. She gassed me. I can't lie. I was so excited and happy for bro. You get me? Yeah. I, I Lee Walks killed me. A man said it's not a treacherous world no more, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. Walks, have you healed? What are you saying to me? What's going on? No, nah, but his his missus gave me hope in the female, you know, female species, species again. You get me? Oh. Well, that's when a woman loves you, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? I never said it wasn't a treacherous world anymore. I just said, you get me? She's not included in that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but were you saying, the man, have you watch any boxing this weekend? Because there was a cu- couple fights, you get me? Mm. No boxing. You see no highlights, nothing. So you see Conor Ben knocking out Chris Algieri? I've been too busy streaming, fam. Yeah, talk about that. Forget the boxing right now. Talk about your right. stream. Let me sit back. Lee's been streaming. Yes, man. I've been streaming, isn't it? Like, um, seriously, my brother, my big brother, walks. You know what I'm saying? He most definitely has been a forerunner in this streaming thing. He's like, Lee, you need to get onto the streaming. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. I, I see the vibes. I came. And the good thing about being around walks is being able to come around and see what streaming's about. So, going down to his and just chilling with the stream and seeing how they chat and interact. And I was just, I just realized one day I, we were playing, what was it? The Spider-Man thing. And I was just like, raw, this is actually fucking cool. This is just like hanging out with your friends. You know what I'm saying? That already fuck with you. So 
I said to myself, all right, let me do a little streaming thing. So as you know, I got my Xbox on my PS5. And I said to myself, yeah, let me just do a little setup based on that. Listen, I started streaming, I think about a week ago or so consistently. And boy, I, I've, I've, it's been lit. It's been, it, content creation wise, it's been the most fun I've ever had. It doesn't feel like work. It feels like, okay, I'm going to turn on my computer and play. You know what I mean? While I banner with the mandem in the chat, you know what I'm saying? We've had moments of like the night bot as b- block walks the other, the, the, my last stream. I haven't streamed in three days. My night bot blocked walks, yeah? You know what I'm saying? Um, That same night, my neighbors ended up banging on my door because I was making up so much fucking noise in the stream. Hey, listen, it was lit. Fucking lit, man. It's a, it's a blessing. I can't lie, you know? You know what I'm saying? F, when you coming through the stream? No, same, same, still. Let me let me know when you're streaming, man. I come true, man. I need to I let me know lie. so I can subscribe to your channel. Yeah, 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 we'll send you the link, but I can't lie. Watching you play Halo is maybe when I fire out the Xbox. And that's what I was like. Is it is it co-op? Bro, hey, if it's co-op, me and you, I see bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll jump on the Xbox just to that, bro. You know what I'm saying? That was the, the Halo's looking lit. Halo Infinite. You lot ain't already. Subscribe to twitch.tv forward slash lead to the video gaming. Tune into his streams. Usually late night once after he's done his editing and that. It come true, forward. You get what I'm saying? Why for that, but forward. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, lit streams. But obviously, you like ain't, ain't seen what's going on with the bots since I got to educate you right now. I'm sure you're all aware of Connor Ben at this point. Yeah. Yeah, so... He had a fight on the weekend against Chris Algeri. Um, he's like a seasoned vet, but he hasn't fought in a long time. So it was a step up in, in you know, on paper. And he knocked him out in the fourth. They get me. Chris Algeri was on, on, on the back foot. Conor Ben slipped one of his jabs. They get me, gave him a one-two and put, made him slouch forward, fam. That was the fight over. Bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. So... Exciting fight, you get what I'm saying? And I'm excited to see what Conor Ben does in the future. Um, I'm sure Lee's seen a couple of his dad's fights live and these things. Come on, man. Are you dumb? Nigel. Man like Nigel. Come on. Yeah, man. So I'm, I'm excited to see where his future goes. And since you guys ain't seen the fight, I can't really say anything too much about it. But after the fight, he did call out Adrian Brono. Adrian Brono. Did you know what's that fight? Adrian's fight. Adrian Broner versus Conor Ben. Oh, no, no. You want to watch that? I haven't watched it. No, it's, I'm saying he called him out after the fight. Would you not watch that? Of course. We oh, yeah, of course. It's Adrian Broner, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's AB. <laughs> immediately, a- even Adrian Broner is like, he's not the best boxer, but like, even just watching him because he's such a bit of a trick, you know what I'm saying? He's entertaining that way. So, yeah, you're true. Yeah. Um, who would you, who would you both pick to win? Connor. You pick Connor. What about you, F? AB. You're picking AB? Yeah, AB's my guy, man. I can't lie, AB's my guy too. I can't I, lie to you. You know what? I, I fuck with his personality still. He's a character, man. I'm rooting for AB. You see my problem with him? Is he doesn't throw enough punches, like... He's happy to just sit there and be in his defensive shell. No, bro. When you throw your hands, you're one of the most exciting boxers out there. Mm. But he doesn't throw his hands. Mm. So if that happens, Conor Ben wins. I just don't, I just don't think Adrian Broner cares enough about the sport of boxing, to be fair. This is, He's got too much going on, isn't it? I don't think... Yeah. Conor ben, Conor ben, and when you think of who's Conor ben, Ben's dad is, like, there's no way they're going unprepared, bro. No way, we're, they're stepping in unprepared, bro. So I'm going to say Connor, man. So I'm guessing you didn't see no highlights of Lomachenko versus Richard Comey. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> that was a beating. <laughs> Where? Is it? That was a beat, bro. Mama was punching him up so much. He started looking at the corner like, yo, stop this. <laughs> <laughs> he did that twice, bro. Yeah, no, no, no. And my man, yeah, and he's telling, yeah, yeah, I seen them highlights. I seen them. You know what? That was that was from Lomachenko. That was um that was class. That was class, man. You got what I'm saying, Clark. He 
that he was, he, you know, when you just know you can hurt somebody really badly, like he was probably, yeah. like you've thrown a tump and then your next tump's coming. You're just like, there's so much intent on it. And you're just like, nah, this guy can't even see it. Like he don't even know. He's not even where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So, and the corner and, and the side apparently didn't want to stop it. They didn't. It went to distance. It went to distance. And I think the only reason it went to distance is because Lomachenko wanted it to go to distance. He didn't want to hurt him too bad. You know what I'm saying, Carl? There's a, I've seen at least three occasions that he stopped and was like, nah, I don't want to mm-hmm. give this guy no more punishment. Mm-hmm. Got to give um, Richard Comey um, credit for surviving to the end as well. But okay, we say surviving to the end is like what you just said. Like, you know, Lomachenko didn't really want to put full power into what he's delivering. You know what I'm saying? So that's a... There's that angle as well. Okay, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. (laughs) Hey, are you familiar with the the, the lightweight division? So obviously, Cambosis, Tiafimo, Lomachenko, Haney, Tank, Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia. You, the Ryan Garcia, the tanks, the um, Haney, Devin Haney, um, couple, a couple of them. Not not everybody though. Who would you like to see in the undisputed fight against Cambosis next? Out of those names. Out of those names. The I would say a fighter I'm a fan of it'd be Javante, man. I don't I don't know whether he's ready, but it's got to be Javante. What do you say, Neff? No, yeah, I agree. I agree with this though. I'm on the same shit. I want to see Tank get them titles, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that, bro. Them I can't lie. A good on Tank, you know what I'm saying? Trust me. Another person I want to see get the title, and it's finally getting his shot. Dini and White, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have parred that brother off too much, man. And the wickedest thing is, he's not getting a title shot that he should have. You understand? He should have got. He's getting a title shot out of, I just say, the only decent boxer who don't really care who he fights and it pro- is proven, and that's Tyson Fury. Mm-hmm. Like everybody mm-hmm. else, D- Dillian's been on, uh, Dillian, like they've been moving this boxer to fight that boxer, that for, and nobody wants to scrap Dillian. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a dicker oh, thing. Yeah. Fucked him off for over, over, what is it, one and a half to two years. Do you know what I'm saying? That's disgusting, man. That boxing ain't a, I don't know, man. Some parts of boxing, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just a weird sport, bro. It's, it's, yeah, it's a janky sport still. Wait, who you picking to win the fight? Fury, man. What about you, F? Uh, yeah, I feel Fury's going to win, but I'd want, I'm rooting for Tillian still. I'm team body snatcher still. I want him to win. <laughs> I don't, that's the Dylan White's my favorite heavyweight boxer because I feel like he's the realest representation of the man. That's what I'm saying. I can respect that, definitely. But Fury's a beast, though. I can't even cap. Fury's a beast, he is. But Dillian is us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, Dillian I agree. Is us. I agree, bro. I agree with that. I just feel um, Tyson Fury just. How he is as a boxer, like he's yeah, it's just them them two are in completely different world. I think um Dillian, mm. Dillian has you know, Dillian has heart and Fury has heart as well. It's like you can't really, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like, like you said, I like Dillian for attitude, for how he is outside the ring, for how he moves. He's, he seems that like he comes up really an honest brother, you know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. it, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But up against Fury, I don't see it. Don't see it. Fair play, fair play. Um, you lot seen Bouncer and Liquorman resolve their issues? Did they resolve it? Um, yeah. yeah, I see Liquorman made a video mm-hmm. saying that yeah they sorted it. So he's basically telling everyone to just come off of it. Really, to be honest, I think that Liquorman had the back foot. To be fair, public opinion is a strong. You don't take advantage of somebody who can't read or write. You know. So you're still you're still on the side of yeah bouncers are uh, wrong bad guy yeah I think um it's funny I watched a, there was a Zoom you know the 
um, that was going about amounts to talking about, you know, the situation and that. But to be fair, like, you know, regardless of whether you were going to give it to him or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, actions speak louder than words, you know, and it shouldn't have gotten to a point where a man has to speak up and ask for things that you say are his. You know what I'm saying? You know? Fair play, fair play, fair play, man. What do you think, F? I hear Lee, but I think Bouncer would have only been wrong if he weren't trying to give the things back. But as soon as they asked for them, he handed them over, to be honest. Nah, but there's such a thing as public perception until you're in sitting in the hot water, fam. It's like, yo, it's defo, you know. You were wrong until that moment. Do you know what I'm saying, F? Uh, yeah, yeah, like you were wrong until that moment, until man had to take it somewhere. Because obviously you two were falling out because he's changed up management. I'm sure they've had these conversations. Uh, like the to, to be honest, I don't feel he was wrong for trademarking them, but I feel he was wrong for trademarking them behind my man's back, to be honest. You should have let him know, like, yo, I'm doing this, that, and the third. Split the trades, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm building the brand as well. Just, you can, there's some agreement I'm sure the both of you can come to. You know what Facts. I'm saying? Yeah. I just agree that hey you lot on it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. I just think nice no, in the public, it's like there's a lot more pressure and it affects the, the um perception of your brand and you as a businessman, whether people will do business with you openly as and as your brand is growing, things like that fucking matter, man. I don't need that car. I hear you, man. You lot watch the um, Formula One on the weekend. Ah, uh, fam. No, sir. No, I didn't get to watch it, you know, and I actually meant to as well. Ah, uh, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is what we need to talk about. Oh, yeah, you put it in the group as well, didn't it? You told us. Yeah. To I remember. Speaking of... Can't janky. hear you, Lee. Go on, go on. I was saying, speaking of janky sports, yeah? Yo, F1, what, what the rascal? What kind of cheating... And then, man, I saw the hashtag trending. I see them giving five points. I, I hear that um, Max Verstappen did a mad thing during the... I, I don't even know. Like that. It's like... It, well, I saw a title, and it's like um, they did anything to rob a black man of the win or something like that. Do you know what I mean? It's just... It's, yeah, it's disgusting, man. It's disgusting. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down from my point of view, yeah? Uh, I haven't... I watched um, Formula One on since, like, I'd say, like, 14 years or something, 15 years. Yeah. 10 plus, anyway, you know what I'm saying? I ain't watched it. Mm-hmm. Used to watch it on a casual thing. Mm-hmm. Not really understanding the rules fully, but you get me, like, it's the only thing on at the time. Like, there's no lit cartoons. You get me? The Formula One's the best thing on TV, is basically what I'm saying. Cool, boom. I'm hearing, the, the, I'm seeing the, the narratives that's going on this season and then I'm hearing the finales this weekend, this past Sunday, gone in it, cool. Tuned in, from five laps in, tuned in, cool. Race is getting well. Um, Hamilton's in the front, they get me leading most of the race. It gets to the fifth lap, like five laps to go now. Someone in the back of the race crashes. Ooh. So the safety car comes out. Which basically means everybody slow down. There's no overtaking, mm. whatever else. Yeah, cool. That happens for four laps. On the radios, the CEO is basically saying, all right, it's going to finish on the safety car. So basically, whatever position you're in, it's done. The race is done. Then just before the last rap, he's like, no, we're going to allow the cars to unlap themselves. And there's going to be one full, full lap of racing. Bear in mind some context. My, um, Hamilton hasn't pitted for like 40 certain laps. So he's still on the same tires that he's been on because they didn't want to lose track position or whatever else. And they get me. And cool, it was a good plan up until this point. He's like, we're going to have one full lap of racing, let the cars unlap themselves. What they did was let five cars unlap themselves and then Max and Lewis Hamilton a side-by-side race. But what they were meant to do is make all the cars unlap themselves and then, yeah, cool, you can race. But they broke their own rules and... They broke their own... They broke their own rules, bro. 
<laughs> Literally, what they did was not in the rule book. It was against their own rules. And said, oh. so Mercedes are appealing, right? They're, they've got to be appealing. Their appeal was denied. Serious. But you're appealing to the same people that made the decision in the first place. So I don't know. We can't really expect it yeah, to change. It's a, it's a, you know, I got to be real with you. You know, I said boxing was a janky sport. Yeah, F1 and it's corruption, isn't it? It's just corruption, car. You can't, what, what's going on? What's, what's some crash and then you make a special thing where you can. So had they not done that last lap thing, how many would have won? Because remember, before the at, at the top of the crash, Hamilton was eleven seconds in front Gun. with five cars between him and Max. Yeah. yeah. By the time the last lap comes, there's no cars in between them, and they're side by side. So Max was overtaking when he's not supposed to overtake. No, 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 no. I don't like they let the the five cars in between them pass. Right. Okay. And then let them to race yeah. with yeah. Max on the fresher tires. Yeah. Yeah. So. You get me. On on a on a they stopped the race and gave it an uneven playing field, basically. Basically, you got what I'm saying? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, bruv? This is this is not the first time we've seen that, you know, and I'm gonna say you would never have these kind of controversies. It's always very weird when there's black people involved in sports. <laughs> very things get very strange. Rules and judges and all sorts of weird things take place, bruv. When you have somebody who's not from the background of the ruling classes and they don't want to, you know what I mean? You, listen, man, Lewis is the greatest driver we, this world has ever seen to date. So just everybody, man, and just accept. But they have to start changing rules and, you know, writing, doing weird stuff with the playbook. Like, it's like, remember boxing back in the, like, turn of the century, right? And they used to do, like, um, you know, black, that they had the whole, you know, um, the great white hope versus the black man, sort of the big black monster thing. And I remember one fight, they made this guy fight for how many rounds, fam? And it's like, you're fighting, they would change rules like, um, like, you know, when you're, you've been fighting certain fighters for cert certain amount of time. And I do believe they even had fights when they'd swap fighters around. You understand what I mean? Like, oh. man, all this bullshit has been going on for, for anyway, you know? It's just weird. It's just the weird. It's just weird. It's just very weird. You know what I'm saying? And there's only the only one familiarity I can see in all these cases is the color of skin of the person they're dealing with. You understand? That's the only thing I can see. You know? In my opinion, well, not in my opinion, he would have been the most successful um, Formula One racer ever if he had won that race. Mm. Mm. So make of that what you will. Yeah, of course. Like they. Um, they yeah, you know, well, going down in history, probably how many years they'll probably turn turn that result round. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think, listen, you see all these things like, you know, you see things get turned around like, you know, and this happen and things get exonerated and this person get freed and blah, blah. That'll get turned around, man. That'll get turned around. You can't, that's, you can't generalize like that, man. It's long. Speaking of people that have been robbed before, um, Kim Kardashian, Files for immediate termination <laughs> of her marriage. Yeah, um, that, seg that segue there. <laughs> yeah. Well, <then. laughs> Where's she lost thoughts on that? Listen, um, I, you know what? If Kim <gasps> away from him, she she can. You know what I mean? She still got West in her Twitter handle. You know. Um, maybe, you know, maybe they're planning for the next series of, um, keeping up with the Kardashians. I don't know, you know, but, uh, actually making the move to do so. <sighs> like, I don't know, like if, if it's not scripted, me being Kanye West and actually seeing those papers, that would fucking hurt, man. That would fucking hurt. I mean, Did I you expect any different. Um, I don't know, man. Car, she herself, you gotta, you gotta understand she's with Kanye West, man. That's not an easy person to, I can understand to get along with if you, you know, if you know how the brother operates, you know, and him with all the mental health issues as well, you know what I'm saying? While she's been there, like, you know, trying to do a public, um, you know, trying to 
make them look good for the public. Do you know what I mean? And he's, you know, uh, Bill Wylan. So maybe, you know, she's come to the end of it. She's tired of stunts, tired of all of this. She just wants to be with a, you know, guy who's, at the end of the day, going to make her feel good, not have um, outbursts. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a, yeah. Kanye, Kanye's different. He's a genius, yes, but, you know, doesn't mean Kim has to stay with him, boy. Pete Davidson's needs to, needs to dead, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's still on him Bro, you know what yeah I think the whole world should be on him and he's that sort of brother that like when she's finished with him because she will be when she's finished with him she, he's gonna be like yeah you know I had my moment with, like drop dead you fucking parasite man I don't know I don't know I think he's with another woman already still yeah I swear why were they holding hands yeah I saw something on, on Twitter um him with someone else can't remember who the celebrity was, but yeah. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit wild. What are your thoughts on it, Walks? We say I'm... It's a treacherous world. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my only thought I have really still. What can you really say, man? Um, I don't know how it is to, to um, be in a relationship with someone bipolar or diagnosed bipolar. Yeah. Um, so I can't really say anything based on that and I don't know I don't have the answers um hopefully it doesn't affect Kanye too much mentally hopefully it doesn't affect their kids too much mentally and you know mm. blessings to all involved you feel me that's my thoughts what about you F being a married man ah uh, yeah it's mad man I recently see the um the show with Kanye and Drake mm. Kanye was kind of singing to Kim like to basically get back with him <laughs> And then, yeah, the next day, I've obviously seen that. So, yeah, it's mad. Like, I woke up, I hope it, like, mentally don't affect him, innit? It's crazy. <laughs> that one, that one finished me still. That one actually finished me because I'm about to say he was singing to his girl. The next day, she's far to officially be single, bro. Yeah, but you know what? All, 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 when all said and done, there's no act following Kanye West in her life. I'm telling you that now. There's no act like Kanye's. Kanye's like Kanye will. Kanye literally kind of will eclipse any man she's with. Any man she's with, he will always have to live in Kanye's shadow, and that's a that's a fact. That's a motherfucking fact. It's gonna be a hard place for a brother to sitting you know what i'm saying you know yeah facts well you're all right there why for that anyway <laughs> yeah hard place for a brother to sit here you understand oh fucking hell <laughs> <laughs> hey it had to be done bro at this point you don't know how... hey wait wait before we go any further what i'm going for the brother tell me can't talk about taking a shower on, on my Twitter, bro. Like, what, which one of your toxic followers, mate? Uh, <laughs> I went, you know, after you tweeted I, me, I, I went and checked. I, I don't know what you are talking about. You're going to have to enlighten me still. <laughs> Lee, nah, go ahead. You know F, you're a brilliant podcaster still. He played the role of the audience. Listen, so basically, I'm online. I said, you know what? I'm going to take a quick 10-minute shower. Then, what did I say? Then um, I'm going to come jump on stream or something like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This brother um, replied under fire. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, I added walks and I was like, walks, is this one of yours? I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to know why he was saying fire. It's like, I don't, nigga, I don't know you. Like, you know, but I knew it was one of walks' people. You get it? Or somebody <laughs> watches the pod or something. You know what I mean? Anyway. Then, um, under that, he wrote, what was it? Oh, a man can't talk about shower, getting in the shower online or something. A man not saying, like, how can you expect me to not say something or blah, blah? I'm just like, yeah, whatever, man. Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't know what I go on, fam, but yeah. These men that, these men that think, like, even, that they can police what a man saying, you know, for fighters. Listen, man. You tie your shoes, it will be fire. You walk out the door, it's fire. Like, allow, me, man. allow me, allow me. I can't lie, I can't lie. Even at um, S birthday yesterday, 
<laughs> obviously, oh, his man. cousins don't don't subscribe Bro. to the same language that we do, innit? And I was, they said something, and then F looked to me, he's like, you wanted to say fire for that, innit? <laughs> and it just kept on carrying on for, like, a good five minutes. I was just an amaze, bro. <laughs> Hey, I was like, every, amazed. Every time a man says that, I mean, we all look at each other the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was crazy still. Wait, F, I want to apologize for not turning up yesterday. I got the invite, but you know, you done no man. Like I was literally painting my girl's place. So, you know what I mean? No, I heard, I heard, man. It's calm, man. So next time around, man, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah man. You get to meet the Ugandans, man. Yeah, boys. <laughs> yeah, we call them the Yap Boys. Um, Don't call them Ugandans no more. We call them Yap Boys. Yap Wooks calls them the Yap Boys. Why? Because you're always on Yaps. Yeah, I've, I've never been on one, bro. Hey, I, I got pictures of you in the Yap. When right. was this? <laughs> you was in the trench coat. The bitch. Hey, <laughs> 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 would you not think about Denzel Washer and saying he doesn't know who Damson Interest is? Um, Me and my girl had this debate the other day. All right, lead off then, bro. Lead off, lead off. Can't really fault him. Like, I don't know. Like, he's basically kind of retired. Like, when you create, so you wouldn't really know what's going on like that. I'm, I'm in but, agreement. But you in know, agreement. Like, yeah. Like everyone that's everyone that's tuned in knows who Dumps and Interest is, bro. What's, Jay-Z, what was the, the other side of here. the argument, though? What was the other side of the argument? What do you mean? You said you were debating this, so there's obviously two sides of the debate. What's the other side of the debate? Disrespecting the thing. That's the only thing I can think. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, everyone knows who he is, bro. That's it. Like, no. Snowfall is a huge show, bro. My only thing that came to my mind when I saw it, and like like you lot said, it's probably a thing where he just not in tune, just like in his own world, and focusing on his own family and whatever else to get me. Cause obviously his son and daughter do the showbiz thing as well, innit? So, uh, and he mentors a lot of young, they get me young actors and these type of things. So he probably doesn't have time to be watching TV like that. Cause even, oh well, no, I ain't seen the latest season of, of Snowfall, do you get me? Okay. So if I ain't seen it, we can't assume Denzel Washington has seen it. Do you get what I'm saying? That comparison. But, he blew gone. That, that oh. different thing, you know. Oh, wow. You're gone, Wolves. Gone. Gone. <laughs> Man put, him, put his name next to Denzel, you know. I like it. I like it. Manifestation. You see it? Blue tick white off. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yes. Yo. I will say really finish. <laughs> Can I carry on? <laughs> Go on, Denzel. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> as I was saying before, Madam interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> My other side of the coin for me is when um, Daniel Kaluuya got a role um, to play one of these um, American stories. I think it was Get Out. Um, and Samuel Jackson spoke out against it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, completely, like, obviously, like, you ain't been through our struggle type thing. Yeah. So that would be my only thing. Is there a bit of that in there? Um, you know what? That's between, as you man say, without um, facts, that's between him and God, you know? Um, I think it can be... Definitely perceive like that, like the older, bitter actors hating on the British, younger actors, you know. But there's coming for you. Yeah, but it, but at the same time, like you also have to understand that when these shows are coming about, they're not household names. They are coming from places where you need to start from gra- grassroots. When you look at Get Out, nobody knew that Get Out was going to be as huge as it as it did. Do you get what I'm saying? When you look at Snowfall, nobody knew it was going to be as big as it was. But it's these... Bro, act- I didn't... I didn't even know Damson was from the UK. Show me. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> these are guys getting into places at grassroots levels before it's blown up. Going for the roles and going to do the thing. It could be a tiny show. If it's a tiny show, nobody talks about it. If it's the hugest thing in the world, then we have a problem. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So... But me, I feel, you know, I always feel it's a bit unfair when I hear the older actors talk up, you know. 
um, I think in Sam, Samuel L. Jackson's case, it was a bit, it was more direct. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, it was more direct. But I think with Denzel, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt because also he, people look at that brother and he looks very young, but he's an old guy. I swear he's 60 plus or something. You know what I mean? I don't think he's on Twitter like that. I don't think he's on, you know, Netflix or whatever, doing social media, this and that, like that. Like you said, I think he's a busy guy doing other things, to be fair. But, you know, you can't, you can't know 100% still. Yeah. And you see the Davison's response? What? No. He didn't need to respond, so. <laughs> nah, he just, he just made a joke about it, because um, obviously in Denzel's confusion, he mispronounced Damson's name. And called him dan- dancing address basically. Oh um, yeah, he's like from now on address me as dancing address. Yeah, I see that. I see it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's yeah. on that. Yeah, dancing address. Yeah, and I can't <laughs> lie. His 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 impression of Denzel was a very good one. Still, if a man ain't seen it, I'd recommend it. Oh Jesus, that was dope. He 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 don't fuck up like. Now before that's why they asked Denzel about it because he done an impression of Denzel and it was. Yeah, they, they asked Denzel, have you seen Samson's mm. impression of you? Hey, no, this is basically, I don't know who he is. No, he called him Dancing Address. Like, trying to figure out what his name was, basically. No, no, no. He knows who Dancing Idris is. <laughs> <laughs> we need to show you the clip. We need to show you the clip. No. Yeah, Lee needs to watch the clip. Because real talk, you can't... Man said Dancing Address. Like, you're trying to, you're trying to mock man's thing. Do you understand? Because nobody's called. Nah, no. I, don't, I don't think. I don't think. I don't no, think. So you know from, what? From if the video, Lee, if you watch the video, it's like the environment they're in. Like it's, it's like really, it's on the red carpet. Yeah, it's mad busy. There's bare sound going on. So he probably didn't even hear the question like that properly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm assuming he sat down and they're having a conversation and he's had the. No. Time. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I hear. I hear that. All right, all right. Um, so showbiz, eight way Mello's unhappy with um the mobile performance of Steph London and Miss Banks. Mm. They used his um <laughs> I'm not sure which which pop smoke instrument it was. Was it um Christian Dior? Was, yeah, it was Dior, yeah, it was Dior. Ah, yeah, it was Dior, it was Dior. I saw a tweet, man. What's your thoughts? Um I I was I didn't know what he was talking about in regards to the mobiles. I just thought they'd done a tune on his rhythm and he wasn't happy about it, basically. But I was like, raw, that's man's vocal. Like, that was, that was that's violence, isn't it? <laughs> what did you think, F? Nah, yeah, I thought, yeah, obviously, like, if they ain't got his permission, you know, I thought someone should have reached out to him. I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. I, my, my, see me, yeah, with 88 Miller. I feel like he don't really fuck with the UK scene like that. I don't know what it is, um, but I just don't see him, like, involve or interact with it like that, like that. It's usually just him and US rappers, like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be, you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you, to be fair. You know what I'm saying? And if you're on, in a space where a lot of UK producers want to be because the bag is seen so big and the industry over there is looked upon, you know, and it's quite rightly so as more advanced and, you know, like the rewards are so huge. Like, you can't kind of, I'm not going to say blame him because, you know, you have to respect our scene, same said way. Do you know what I mean? But you can understand the attitude. Do you know what I'm saying? towards the UK in that respect. You know, you're, you're in the promised land. Do you know what I'm saying? If I knew oh. that the UK did sign to him or did it wrong at some point, then yeah, I would, I would hear you. But I haven't heard anything like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh. Just seemed like from the beginning, just didn't fuck with the UK scene. You get me? Like, even down to like daily, the, the rated awards and stuff like that. Was, yeah, it just doesn't seem like he fucks with the UK scene still at all. Mm. I could be wrong. Um, hopefully we see I die though. Cause there's other producers that's around him from the UK that don't fuck with the UK scene either. But and that's that's an energy. And they've been vocal about that as well, still. But you know. 
birds of a feather, fam. You know, like that. But yeah, speaking of um, intellectual property, um, John Cena had an interview the other day and said the WWE owns his name. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Don't worry, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is Officer Ricketts. This is his fault. <laughs> hey, epic, pick up your thing, man. <laughs> but yeah, um, John Cena saying that WWE owns his name. Cold pick. Um, That's a cold pick. Hey, F, I, I'm glad, like, you know what I mean? I, I respect the fact that you would go to the lengths that you have gone. Um, I don't know who drew this. Um, like you're saying, Officer Ricketts. You know who drew it? Ricketts, right? You got what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, no, I've seen this before, actually. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, it's very cold. Very cold, very cold. Anyway, yeah, yeah let's continue. Yeah, that, he, he did an interview. He said WWE owns his name, and they get a percentage of everything he does. So that includes his films, his merch, everything. Everything he does, they get a percentage. And his response was basically, go on. The 360 is going on. What kind of contract is that? <laughs> yeah, it's a 360, basically. No, but and he was gone. Forever, bro. No, bro. Like, there's got to be a time where that tapers off. What the fuck? I don't know if they went into that much detail. Is he's in the clip? They certainly didn't. I, I see it. I see it. He said he didn't mind it, innit? Yeah, yeah. He said he didn't mind it. I mean, he's like they're responsible for how bit um how much of a, a superstar I am, basically. Yeah. So I don't see the problem in them getting like a percentage of what I do. The low percent, you know. And if they support his what he does. Then, I, you know what? I'm not happy with that shit, man. You can't like <laughs> talk it up. Like you can't. Okay, if if his name is let's say you know Billy Billy Bob, right? And they say, okay, boom, we're gonna call you John Cena, and we're gonna own this name and this character and this. I can understand that. Is his his name is John Cena, right? His government name, yeah. Yeah, his actual name, yeah, yeah. You can't do that, fam. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, that's that's a that's a that's a yeah that's that's a that's a mad move. That's a mad move. I think all contracts like that need to stop, man. And people need to start being aware of actual fair business practices, man. You know what I'm saying? We, what were we just talking about earlier about copyright and all of these things with bouncer and you know what I'm saying? We've heard the stories about locks and fucking puff that like all these practices need to dead, man. Know what I'm saying, and worse off, you're a big corporation, you get money anyway. You're the WWE, uh, but that's how they get their money in it. <sighs> no, nah, that's that's slimy, bro. That's slimy, bro. They get money, they get money off advertising, all sorts, bro. That's a huge organization. They don't need to hold on to John Cena. In fact, if he's given so much to your organization, shouldn't you be yo? No, nah, that's disgusting. It's actually disgusting. That's that's made one more. Um, sorry, F gone. What walks have said is true though, like. If we've only heard about the John Cena one, like how many other people out there do you think? Got the same I was just about to go to that. Like, what do you think The Rock has got that contract? You know what? I don't think so. I think The Rock is a snappy bastard. I've seen the way The Rock goes about business. He wouldn't even he he stopped the whole production of Fast Furious what because he had to get his business off. Nah, man. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. If it comes out that that is true for The Rock as well, then boy, but I don't know, man. Dwayne Johnson's a bit different still. That could be a reason why he doesn't really go back to the WWE like that, though. Hey, The Rock. Yeah, you don't make appearances uh-huh. like like John Cena does or them yeah. man there, like Brock, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg and them man there. Do you get me? Or, and I'm sure um, Batista's had beef with them uh, like years ago about... S- some shit. I don't know if it's similar to this, but yeah, I mean, he's had beef with them about certain things. So it's possible. Mm. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I actually would not be surprised though. And if you look at um wrestlers that leave WWE and have to change their names mm. when yeah. they go to other companies and stuff. Mm. You know, yeah, it is so... WWE been running from the days of WWF. Yeah, they've been mm. this thing with Hulk, Ultimate Warrior, Andre the Giant, all these 
huge superstars. So yeah, they probably had licensing from way back when, you know, and have had their contracts. But I think we're entering a day and age where information is so, so freely available. So, and how people perceive brands, you know, the, the pressure comes from the people in it. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think them kind of, them kind of practices there where you tie somebody into a contract. So any little thing that they do, they're now tied to you. Like, nah, man, you got like, listen, man, slavery's done with, man. You know what I'm saying? That's done with, man. You really need to, you really need to give, allow that, you know, you give people their just use. Okay. You can say, yeah, we, I went this far with this. But imagine, bruv. It's like, essentially what that's like is, uh, child support is different, yeah? Because you're raising a child. Do you understand? It's completely different. But I mean more so like tying someone in something and you two could have left on the best of terms. Do you get what I'm saying? And they still have to give you money off of what they did. Why is that okay in this, this scenario? But many men, they grumble in situations of, you know, child support, things they're supposed to do. Do you get it? Uh, one is fucking way worse, man. Mad thing. What can we say, man? I, I don't have the answers, but hopefully a lot of these 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 um these rap these WWE wrestlers aren't in these positions and um, that they have everything owned by WWE. Well, not even everything owned by WWE, but the stuff they do outside of WWE isn't, you know, they don't take a percentage, you get what I'm saying? At least, at the minimum, you know what I'm saying? Not a 360 thing, is it me? You can only hope. You can actually only hope, but... Um, Travis Scott. You want to see the interview? Nah, I heard about it. No. Still. You heard about what? On Joe Budden's podcast, still. Well, what was Joe Budden saying? I haven't seen it yet. Give, give us your thoughts, man. Um, that man were basically saying that... Um, Sometimes giving an interview is a good idea and sometimes it's not. Um, and in this point, it's number one too soon to start talking on certain things, you know? Um, I get, like, I, me personally, I, I kind of understand that Travis in his own head wants to get through this situation, but this is not something you can kind of force people into being on your side. You know, he, I get he's fighting for his career, you know, and thinking thinking, you know, he, his intention wasn't, you know, when you deeper, I don't think his intention was for anybody to die. You know what I'm saying? But negligence is a real thing, you know? Um, and being aware of what's happening on your show is a real thing as well. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's funny because, you know, on every, I'm jumping to another topic. Um, or I don't know whether this is a topic, but, um, you know, Kanye and Drake performing. And people talking about how Drake wasn't performing. Sorry, guys, one second. Oh, you're 30 minutes up. <laughs> Drake, was, um, Drake wasn't performing on the level of Kanye. Everybody's saying, you know, um, blah, 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 would win a versus. But you don't understand that Drake is also in the middle of this stuff. He can't be on stage doing a mad thing. Like, life doesn't matter. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm sure the brother is very aware, court case-wise, as to what, what's going on as well. So... Yeah, I think it was a uh, for Travis. I think he should have shut his mouth. Should have taken a little bit out of the Tory Lanez book. You know what I mean? Um, and been quiet because that don't really, yeah, that don't really, that, that didn't really come across the best. You know? How how do you feel about it? I haven't seen anything about the clips. I'll be real with you. Um, what people saying you stuttering and all of these things. Is it tripping over his words and just saying a whole lot of nothing still? Mm. And it seemed ingenuous from what I'm seeing by the response and that. So I don't know. The only people like we don't have the facts. The only people that know is them and God. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? That's all I can continue to say, bruv. Like the only people that 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 really matter is the family of the people that that passed away. Do you mean that? Those are the people that really matter, and that's who we should be focusing on, mm -hmm. and ways that we can alleviate some of the stress that they're going through. Do you get me? Other than that, nothing else really, really matters. Whether Travis Scott um, feels bad doesn't matter. Yeah, you know I'm saying this is, this is it. It's consequential. 
Yeah, bro. I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, it's a bit egotistical. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, you, how you feel, you know, you got to do an interview to clear your name and to, do you know what I mean? We know, like, just settle, bro. You know, allow the families to grieve. They're probably still mad at you. They're probably, you know, some of those guys in those families may get to a point where they're like, you know what? This tragedy happened, but it's happened. Acceptance of that. But you're there trying to wash your, you understand what I'm saying? Almost trying to oh. do, and wash your hands of a situation and make yourself, you just, you're just, that fucking pissed me off to be fair. You know? No, yeah, they are still mad at him. I think he offered to pay for one of the kids' funerals and the family has refused the money, so. Don't blame him. Bro, someone, someone also said if they did that, that they would um, jeopardize their lawsuit that they have against him anyway. So that could be a reason. Mm-hmm. So it may not necessarily them being mad. They may genuinely believe him or, or, or be um, appreciative of the gesture. The gesture. But <laughs> it's not enough. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, Nothing could be enough. I got to ask the question. With what we know, looking from the outside in, would anybody here be happy with the gesture of playing for the, paying for a funeral? Nah. Nah. I wouldn't. Nah. Trust me. So I think nah. Nothing, nothing. It's nothing that's really going to be acceptable. Um, <laughs> you lost your family member, bro. Yeah, you know that. Do you know what I'm saying? Nothing's really going to... You lost your child, bro. Yeah. yeah. A nine-year-old. That's... Obviously, there were other people that lost their lives and God bless them. But the one that we've heard the most about is the the the, the poor child, the nine year old. So um, I think it's the wickedest. Sorry, if you isn't gonna say something. No, no, no go. Like I think the thing is like um, you know, these people are fans. You know, uh, the fans. These are the people that give you your energy. You understand? It's like you know, I know that like. You know, walks w- you can relate to this F somewhat, you know, climbing the climbing the ranks of this social thing. We see you, F. <laughs> <laughs> or like, imagine one of your fans comes to somewhere that you, you know, you're supposed, they've come to appreciate you. They give you your energy, bro. They, they're they the reason you can do what you, you're doing. And they are, they're, no. Mm-mm. I hear it. I hear it. Speaking of something that would um, have a similar reaction from, from Lee. Huh. And our last topic today. Um, have you not seen the, the video of Sandra Bullock that I put in the group chat? No. Oh. No, what video? When you put uh, it? It's the latest video I put in the group chat. Basically, she says she wishes her adopted kids were the same colour as her. And I do believe I remember Lee talking about something about um, white people adopting black kids or something like that at some point. How do you not feel about that statement? Because she, her, her reasoning for saying it is because um, basically the way she gets approached about having black kids and how, I'm paraphrasing that, how um, intrusive they are and the judgment that she gets and these type of things and they get. How do you not feel? I think that is some of the um, in some of the same ignorance you wouldn't understand unless you are black. You just wouldn't. She won't understand like how much of a slap in the face that is. You get what I'm saying? Like I get it. She, you know, you can run the context of I w- don't want to have to them to go through this pain, them to try and understand. Do you get what I'm saying? But to want to erase what they are and what you see of of them because you've already deemed on some level part of what they are a problem because it intrudes in your day because it it intrudes on you know you having to explain right a good a good parent would say i would rather explain a million times and my child feel out of place in this world you're not fit to you're not fit then to raise those children if that's your opinion yeah that's, I'm looking at Kai there, Kai. That just got me mad, fam. F, what are you saying? You're the father out of all of us. What's going on? No, that statement alone just sounds mad. Even without the context, bro. Like, that's, that's just crazy, fam. 
Yeah, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't even know what to say to that, bro. I see DJ Envy said you knew this when you adopted black kids. Like, why? Why is it a problem now? <laughs> I, I was gobsmacked when I heard it. I'll be real. Bro, I, I was gobsmacked. Bro, like, you know, in, in this day and age, you know, especially with children, like, you know, I always um, think of those moments that kids are going to have to read back. You know, we hear about Will Smith and Jada, you know, <laughs> that their kids have to sit in this. You know, we see moments where um, that madman who was beating up his girlfriend in front of their child, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Now, you come and say this wild thing, that, and that's now all over the internet. At some point, your children, however old they are, are going to have to take this in and absorb this. Do you understand? Yeah, I, I don't think people are aware of the damage. Not that you have to be perfect, but like, especially in race relations, like you really, yo, like you, if, if I'm to adopt white children tomorrow, I'm never, the, like, I love you. That's what comes with you is like what I go accept in it. You know what I mean? Facts. Facts. That's what I'm saying. Kids might all grow up to like start hating their own skin color. Like. Yo, and you got, this is the thing that you see that there F, this is the thing like, so what other little micro, and when we talk about microaggressions, bro, what other little subtle things are these kids picking up that their skin color is a problem? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Damn. That as well. <laughs> Damn. Like, there, there's so many factors to it. Like, it's mad. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I have nothing to say. So I'm just going to leave it there. I want to know everybody's thoughts in the comments about that one there. Um, especially my pups. Pups, call me. Let me know what your thoughts on that one there is as well. You get me? I see someone say they want pops on the podcast. Mm-hmm. So what, New Year lads? Well. We say New Year lads, so you get pops on the podcast? Is that what you're on, yeah? New Year's, yeah? Not New Year's, but in the New Year. Yeah. Oh, in the New Year. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> get yeah, get, get my mic happen. off camera with F somewhere, you get me that. Another suggestion for the New mm-hmm. Year. I'll do a live pod. A live pod? A live pod. Wow. We're, Sorry, all Lee, right. couldn't hear you. Sorry, Lee, couldn't hear what you just said. <laughs> a live podcast, live podcast. Yeah, we can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be lit. Yeah, you can log into the um on OBS and yeah, me read the comments. Have F read the comments and that. Yeah, me say so, yeah, man, it could be. You get me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I'm with it. I'm with it, man. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. But. You know, we've been the, the the chain reaction podcast. You get me? It's a bit of an unorthodox episode this week. We'll, we'll get through the, 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 you know, the trials and tribulations and these things. Mm-hmm. I was going to say something else, but I had to watch the wife for that. But yeah, man, <laughs> I've been Wiley to the Bag Juice. And bro, that's not your name. It's Wiley to the Bag Juice in the building. That's not your name. I'll let these guys sign up for themselves, you get me? Okay, so he's been Blue Tick. Wiley to the Bag Juice. Blue Tick Boy. Wiley to the Bag Juice. So family to the VI. F. Is in the, you know what I'm saying? Rocking the bag juice. You know what? I might put that on, <laughs> might put that on us T one day. Trust me. I'd cop. Uh, we see you got the hitters and drillers. I copped one of those. I'd cop the lead to the bag juice match too. Yeah, that would sell out. <laughs> this guy, we saying that. Hey, wait. Hey, man. Before we even go, how old are you, bro? Hey. I'm 28. <laughs> happy 28, man. Happy 28th, man. You don't wish F a happy birthday as well, man. Oh, I, did, I, I told Walks the other day I'm turning 30, and he actually believed me, you know, like we ain't the same age. Listen, man, you yacht boys be different. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I can't. We're in the same year in school, <laughs> a couple months apart, whatever, cool. But I don't know how I believe that 30. To, he said, Yeah, I'm going to be 30. I said, Huh? I didn't even say that. I, said, I swear. Ah, because he's a yacht boy. You see, that man, they be finagling. They be getting into the country anyhow, fam. But come on, man. Now, in my, in my defense, in my defense, my defense, apparently there's a there's a difference between his Ugandan passport and his UK one, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Not me, what, bro. This is what your brother said to me, innit? <laughs> Not me, bro. I was, I was born here, just to put it this out This is what there. your brother said to me, though, bro. <laughs> I don't, I only got one passport. I don't have two passports, bro. 
Mm-hmm. Can I come over and play football? What are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm hey, just going by what I was told, did it? <laughs> Walks, Walks, she didn't even touch on Lee's uncle, like. Why for that? Why am I touching on anybody's uncle? Oh, Why? Man. Wait, his who- uncle closed. Lee's uncle closed the border, bro. He's, he's oh, um- oh, you're Nigerian <laughs> president. You said um, everything's on the red list. The UK put Nigeria on the red list, and then he said, "You know what? You yeah, Lee, take over this topic. Well. This is you, Lee. This is you." Listen, uh, Nigeria. First of all, yeah, the UK put in Nigeria on the red list. Like that, like, I'm not even. Let's not even speak on Nigeria. Big up Nigeria. UK put oh. in Nigeria on the red list. UK, who's last to respond to any kind of corona, any t- put in Nigeria on a red list. Like. You know what, yeah, the hypocrisy I see anyway. Let me just shut my mouth, fam. Just like that. Just like that. No, it was an inconvenience for people, though. Some people had spent, like, 20 grand on weddings, like, in Nigeria. Like, they can't even go anymore. Like, it's crazy. Surely they can they can take another route around, like, a connected flight or something. I don't know, boy. Yeah. Hopefully, hey, hope. they figure, hopefully they figure it out, but Nigeria, is, I heard, is a beautiful country, man. Yeah, it's a beautiful. I've country. never been. Have you been? I've yeah. not, I haven't been. I heard. I've been. It's a beautiful. Oh, country. you've been? Yeah, just like anywhere, man. You know, it's a beautiful country. It has its amazing parts. Has parts are a bit, nah, you know. Um, but negative news travels faster, as you don't know. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I think Nigeria is a more, as deceptive as it is, is a more honest country in its fuckery. You know, it's blatant. You know what I'm saying? I think the UK is just like quiet with their fuckery, and as we all know, you know what I'm saying? And everybody acts shocked, shocked when, you know, I don't know, you have Boris Johnson sitting on sitting in a police uniform talking about, yeah, we have to do drug raids and this is that, while traces of cocaine found in the houses of parliament. Like, you know, you, you man them are doing your thing over there. And I'm not mad at the... Um, the MPs for doing cocaine. I'm just mad at the hypocrisy, you know, like that. It's fucking stupid. Hey, man, I ain't really got much to say on this shit, goddamn. Um, but God bless everybody that's listening to the podcast. They get me. God bless Pops. God bless F. God bless Lee to the VI. God, hey, God bless Fazzle. Go on, F. I want to shout out someone that tunes in every week, man. Who's that? I don't know who they are, but I always see them in the comments. Um, Game mm-hmm. Pyro. Yeah, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. Might have to start shouting at you lot, you get me? Big, big up Rag Talk TV as well, that's always reacting on every Sunday and that, you get me? Hey, he's tuned in still. Yeah, man. So, you know, it's us, it's never them. Chain Reaction Podcast, aka Bag Juice, you get what I'm saying? Think, we out, man. Peace and love, man.